so I'll talk about uh, something that is a little bit different from the presentations up to now. I'm going to talk about the library. And the first thing I have to say is that this is a hobby. Because the building libraries, developing libraries, doesn't put bread on the top of, of the table. Eh? It's, I don't think you can make a career by making these things. So this is a hobby. It's a very time-consuming hobby. But uh, so let's keep that in mind, OK? So our starting point, you all know it, is density functional theory. And uh, as a theorist, I always have to have an equation in the, the talk. And that you all know, it's the Consham equations. This is what we're trying to solve. Sorry, I don't manage to get rid of this. Ah, wait. No, it doesn't matter. And all the codes that you've heard about here, they solve this. In one way or another, using one method or another, they can solve it once, or you can use a workflow to do it 100,000 times. But it's always this that you're solving. And you have all these parts, the kinetic energy, the external potential, the Hartree potential. That's all exact. So there is no approximation here. The only thing, if you don't get the right result, is because you have a bug in the code, or you didn't converge the calculations. But then there is this little thing here. And that thing is not known and has to be approximated. And you're all used, perhaps, to do PB calculations. That's what the large majority of the community does, for many reasons that I don't want to enter here, because that's a <laughs> very delicate subject. But uh, there are many more functionals. There's not only the PB. Um, I, I, I will discuss a little bit the numbers afterwards, how many there are and uh, how, how they look like, but uh, I think you can, under, you already know there are many. Uh, this is probably the most useful th theory in the past 70 years of all science. I don't know if you actually looked at the Nature as a few years ago, a list of the 100 most cited papers in all branches of science. Uh, I think 15% of all papers are about EFT. I can give you a list if you want. It's rather amazing. Uh, so not only codes, VASP is there with three papers, I think, but also functionals and the original Conan Sham um, and the uh, Hohenberg articles of, uh, are there. So it's very likely the most useful theory of all branches of science in the last, in the last uh, 70 years. Why? Because this is a citation from Axel Becker that I actually like. It's a little bit politically incorrect, I would say, because it says that EFT can be used to describe all chemistry, biochemistry, biology, nanosystems, and materials. Everything on our terrestrial world, world depends on the motions of electrons, therefore EFT does everything, right? So this you all know, uh, and when I, around 20 years ago, it was already 20 years ago, I, I, I arrived in this field of developing codes, and I was supposed to, to, to write a code or rewrite a code, and I arrived here, and I looked at this, and why is this buried inside all codes? And I looked a little bit around, I looked in Abinit, in Espresso, and there was a very entangled code in all these codes that had each one around 10, 15 versions of the exchange correlation function. I may be wrong, you may correct me, but... Uh, but this, in the end, is just a function. It's a function of some variables. So, rather complicated function often, but it's just a function. It doesn't depend if you use plane waves, if you use, I don't know, these to diagnose Hamiltonian. It doesn't, doesn't matter. So it can be easily taken out from the code. Uh, I didn't understand why it hadn't been done before, and I did it. I started doing it, not knowing what lied ahead of me, because it's... Uh, a little bit of a minefield, this. And that's how LibXE was born, because this is completely independent. You can just take this out. And there were many reasons to do it. The first is that you could not run the same calculation often with two different codes. And this was true if you wanted to run one code from the chemistry community and one code from the physics community, because they didn't have the same functionals. There were a couple common denominators. They all have LDA, the Purdue Wang or so. They all had the PBE. But as soon as you wanted to do a HCTH calculation that was very much used by then in chemistry, you couldn't do it with a physics code. And vice versa. So first thing, reproducibility, right? We had the problem, a big problem. Second, uh, you couldn't try even the most, neither the most recent functionals, 
nor the old functionals, because the selection was really very, very tiny. You couldn't reproduce many results that were in some articles, could not be reproduced at all, simply because there was no code that implemented this functional. Uh, and so this was a little bit what I was thinking when I, when, I, when I started doing this. So to make a library for these functions that are here, uh, and the idea is to include all possible functionals that were published. At the time, I thought there were around 100. I was very naive. Uh, but we'll get to the number soon. So, in a nutshell, what is libxc? So it's a library that has all these functions. Uh, it's written in C. Originally, it was exclusively written in C. With the advancements of uh, symbolic languages, it turns out that in, after 2016, Maple uh, is able to convert Maple code to C in a proper way. Uh, and so now the functions are actually written in Maple, and uh, Maple calculates the derivatives aut automatically and uh, outputs the code in C. So uh, this simplifies a lot uh, the problem. Okay, so now it's kind of a mixture. You don't have to buy Maple because the, only I have to buy it, so it's okay. Unfortunately, there is no open source um, mathematical manipulation, so, uh, algebraic manipulation that actually manages to do this. Um, that's life. Whoops. Of course, there are bindings in C and Fortran and Python, actually, so you can run it from any code. There is no problem. Now we are using the Mozilla Public License version 2, and the reason is that there are some commercial codes that wanted to use libxc and that they couldn't in the GPL. So we actually converted. This is a more permissive license than the GPL, um, but okay. Well, of course, we have automatic testing of the functionals, and whenever possible, we also compare with published results, which is often possible, but sometimes it's not. But we do what we can, of course. And now uh, we have, at the moment, uh, 59 LDAs. Uh, if you think that the LDA is probably the only functional that has a mathematical definition, and there is a mathematical definition, it's amazing how you can get 59 versions of it, but uh, there are. 223 GGA functionals, um, 87 MetaGAs, and the local part of 125 hybrids. So this gives a grand total of a little bit less than 500 functionals. You may ask, why do you want 500 functionals? Because in the end, we just use the PBE. Well, we can discuss it privately <laughs> afterwards if you want. I think there are many reasons for that. Um, so for curiosity, I still have around 50 functionals in my to-do list. So there is a to-do file in the, in the library, and uh, it has around 50 functionals left. I don't think you will know any of them, because they are rather, uh, most of them are rather obscure and, and exotic. But uh, the work is not done. So you can imagine that the total number of functionals published in the last 70 years must be around 600. Let's put it like that, which is kind of interesting. It's also interesting that there is not a single review article that mentions even one-tenth of these functionals. Uh, I'm writing one since 2011, but it's long, it's long, it's big. Then we have functionals for exchange, correlation, and the kinetic energy, because there are also what people call orbital-free DFT, where you need functionals for the kinetic energy. So you can also, that's also covered. Uh, there are perhaps 30, 40 functions for the kinetic energy, if you want. And there's also functions for exchange, correlation together, exchange separate, it depends a little bit on the, on the actual functional, but uh, there are these things. Then we have functions for 1D, 2D, and 3D calculations, because some people also run model systems in one dimension and two dimensions. We don't have any for 4D. Uh, no one, actually I was curious if we could do a, LDA for four-dimensional gas, but I don't really find the physical justification to do it. But that would be fun, I think. Then it's quite mature. LibXC is really mature by now. It's included in 28 codes. Uh, actually more than 28 by now. It includes Abinit, Espresso, CP2K, VASP6 will in principle have it. Um, I have a uh, a hacked version of VASP that, of course, linked to LibXC, but the, 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 the official version will probably have it. Uh, and what I really liked is that LibXC gives people who write codes a, a lot of 
it helps them a lot because you can easily write a DFT code if you have the right libraries. Uh, if uh, I did it with my students, a 1D code is 50 lines of Python if you have the right libraries. And so even from the, for the people who don't want to use this million line codes and what's to try by themselves, this helps a lot. And I saw a lot of new codes appearing that they don't even bother to implement the LDA. They just use libxc. And it saves them a lot of time. Yeah? Most bugs in the most common functions, of course, have disappeared. This, I think, is quite obvious. I don't promise anything about the exotic functionals that... Uh, but that's... Then we include... Wh wh what do we provide? This is... Um, very quickly, what, what, what do you need? What does a program need? So the, the, the energy, usually write it like this, the exchange correlation energy. This is the energy per unit particle. This is a function. So it's a functional of the density, but in practice it's a function of a one, two, three, four numbers. So the density, the gradient of the density, the kinetic energy uh, density, Laplacian, depending on the family. So Lebesgue will return this function um, that you need to calculate the total energy, and then the derivatives of this function that enter the exchange collision potential. So the first derivatives. Uh, however, if you want to do response, um, so if you want to do density functional perturbation theory, you also need higher derivatives, and uh, at the moment, LibXC returns the second and third derivatives also if you want. Uh, this in most cases has never been used because there is, to my knowledge, no code that has response theory with a meta GGA uh, up to second order response theory. I don't think it exists at the moment. So uh, this is available from, from uh, LibXC, so the derivatives are available, but th they have never been used. I think uh, Xavier will use them soon, <laughs> I hope. Okay. Uh, just, you have also to realize the complexity of this. So for meta-GGA, there are around 100 different derivatives that are required to do um, a response cal calculation. It's, uh, it's very long and boring, I have to say. Then we also include metadata, such as the name of the functional, the references, the family, uh, if you require external parameters, for example, if it's a hybrid or a screened hybrid or a or a, or a van der Waals functional, so there are, there are um, here's metadata, metadata that, that, that is also there. So the most scientific slide that I have is the, how many functionals are there per year of publication. So this is actually not exactly the number of functionals, it's the number of papers that propose functionals um, per year. And you, you see there are some very old ones, of course. And here, there's, that's when the explosion of the DFT appeared. So if I would plot here the citations of the Hohenberg-Kohn uh, paper or something as a function of time, you will see that the exponential growth starts more or less here. And here we are, I would say we are already going down. Uh, it's actually very hard, so it's 70 years of research. It's very hard to come up with new ideas that really work better, I have to say, but there is still hope. And we are now between five and 10 functionals a year, more or less, okay? Every year. So, um, uh, one minute, that was good. At the moment, we have a tested and, uh, and well, and, and a really stable library. Things don't really change fast and, uh, in, the, in this library, so there is not a big problem for the, for the codes that use it. I think it's the largest collection of exchange correlation functionals in existence, simply because it's 20 years of continuously adding functionals, nothing more. We have both historical and recent functionals, so if you want to reproduce some uh, result from the 80s, you will be able to do it, or even earlier. And now what we are doing in LibXC, uh, we are adding more functionals, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this will be probably the, the next big thing. It's native support for non-collinear densities so that the codes themselves don't have to do it. And uh, there are several ways of doing it and there are even current functionals that, that, that have direct, that some functions that give you direct access to non-collinearity. So this is probably going to be the next thing. GPU support, some people have asked for it. I'm not exactly sure if it's, well, we'll see. 
and maybe some better integration or more integration with the downstream codes in the sense that there are things that the library provides that can be used that have, at the moment are not used. Uh, we have two papers if you want to look at it, but I think this, this is it, okay? We are only three. <laughs>